This is Megan Fitzjames. This video is a world first presentation of an English subtitled interview that took place between Alma, the mother of Aishal Pan, star of the Eagle Hunters film, and a famous Mongolian activist named Tseren Anabish, spelled T S E R E N, last name spelled E N E B I S H. This interview will give fans of the Eagle Hunters film important insight on what happened off camera during Aishal Pan's actual personal journey during filming and beyond. The Eagle Huntress film has been shown around the world in documentary festivals and mainstream theaters. Activist Saren Anabish had been called to the family home so that Aishal Pan's parents could have assistance to understand several issues of concern to them at the time. The interview happened just a couple of days after the Golden Eagle Festival where Aishal Pan was filmed to compete. It was recorded during the first week of October 2014, about halfway through the overall filming process. By way of background, The Eagle Huntress was directed by Otto Bell and produced by Otto Bell, Stacy Reese and Sharon Chang. Photographer and so-called discoverer of Aishal Pan, Asher Svedinsky, became director Otto Bell's co-producer and helper after he introduced Otto Bell to the family. The film was executive produced by famous Hollywood actress Daisy Ridley, infamous documentary maker Morgan Spurlock and his colleague Jeremy Chilnick, and Susan McClory, Mark Simon, Regina Scully, Barbara Dobkin, and Dan Cogan. The film was distributed in the North American market by Sony Pictures Classics with other distributors in UK, France, Greece, Turkey and Germany. Shine Global was one of the main funders. The animation for The Eagle Huntress is in creation by 20th Century Fox Animation and Otto Bell is also going to be uh, involved in producing that. My own passion for following, researching, and attempting to expose the exploitative filmmaking and media marketing processes for the Eagle Hunters film started during the time the interview you're about to watch. The person holding the recording device during the interview that you'll watch is yours truly, and it was done at the request of activist Saren Anabish. I was there at the family home as a paying guest, along with a travel buddy of mine at the time. Please read the BBC News story entitled the Eagle Huntress, uh, Is the Eagle Huntress Really a Documentary, uh, dated February 6, 2017, and look for the person described as a Canadian traveler because that's me, and they uh, included a link into my Facebook post on a wit my witnessing of the filmmaking process while I was staying with the family at the time. Uh, that Facebook post will also provide you with uh, some important uh, links for you to follow to get some important updates in terms of my research into this matter. It was not until 2016 that I was able to secure a translation of the interview you will see uh, with the help of a friend of mine who is Kazakh Mongolian. Uh, that friend helped me uh, have it translated and then I had help also to have it subtitled on my behalf by the individual that runs this uh, YouTube channel on which my videos are posted. The interview you're about to watch took place in the main room of the family's winter home in Eltonsogs, uh, Western Mongolia, that's spelled A-L-T-A-N-S-O-G-T-S. -S. And many people were staying there at the time, including director Otto Bell, co-producer slash helper Asher Svedinsky, their guide and translator Daut Riskin, spelled D-A-U-I-T, last name spelled R-Y-S-K-H-A-N, and his uh, Otto Bell's two cameramen, including t uh, Simon Niblet. Saren Anabish had her travel client with her, and I uh, had my travel buddy with me. In fact, it is, uh, was a very full house at the time. The only people in the room during the filming of this interview were Saren, Alma, her two younger children, and me. Uh, Aishal Pan and her father and everyone else was off doing their thing elsewhere, and Aishal Pan's older brother was away from home uh, in the army. Saren Anabish, as you will see, is wearing a blue top and her trademark blue hair. Saren had informed me that some of the issues the family were humbly wondering about included uh, whether they'd be paid for the food uh, that they were providing to the filmmakers, 
um, whether Aisha Pan was covered by insurance for the risky activities that she was undertaking during filming. Well, uh, that was a concern of Aisha Pan's mother. Uh, concern over Aisha Pan's uh, potentially falling behind in school due to her activation in the filming process. And most importantly, exactly what the purpose of the filming was and how they would be compensated. When you see Aisha Pan's mother, um, you'll see that in her hand she holds some paper. The paper is the actual contract that her husband Agalai had signed on behalf of his 13-year-old daughter Aisha Pan. Uh, there's a one US dollar stap uh, bill stapled to the front page of the contract, which is two and a half pages long. The contract was for the securement of the exclusive all media in perpetuity rights to Aisha Pan's life story with a consideration of one US dollar. The contract was written only in English, which was a language that neither of Aisha Pan's parents knew and understood, and it was witnessed by the filmmaker's own staff. By way of background information of relevance, Aisha Pan's fame was kicked off when photographer cum co-producer and helper to Otto Bell, Asher Svedinsky, took photos of her handling her father's eagle while dressed in traditional Kazakh outfit against the beautiful backdrop of Altai, the Altai Mountains. I ask that you please watch my YouTube video called The Eagle Huntress Contradictory Genesis Stories that will show you more information that you may find troubling when taking the bigger picture into account, especially in terms of how the information is covered up and intersects with how the Eagle Huntress is categorized in, in terms of the film type, uh, which of course in turn has further ramifications in terms of expected compensation for involvement in the filming process. I will talk more about that after showing the interview. Um, I mention this now because when Sarah Nenebish had been there in the family home, she also interviewed uh, Asher Svedinsky and was told by him that Aisha Pan was the first female to engage in the Kazakh hunting, eagle, uh, eagle hunting in Mongolia, which, as it turns out, is false. In fact, Asher Svedinsky told Sarah Nenebish that his so-called discovery of Aisha Pan just involved the, quote, leading one kid led to another, and that led to another, and then luckily and eventually I found her." End quote. Actually, uh, please know that this is a highly disingenuous rendition of what actually occurred. Again, please see my video of the contradictory Genesis stories uh, available uh, for viewing on YouTube. It took seven months of following the, the media marketing to, to put together and uh, involves footage uh, from various people involved in promoting and making the film. So let me go ahead now and show you this English-speaking world premiere of the interview of Aisha Pan's mother, Alma, and activist Sarah Nenebish. Please put yourself in the shoes of the thousands of Mongolians and Kazakh Mongolians who ended up watching this interview and imagine what seeing this must have made them feel. Again, this, was, this video was recorded halfway through the filming process. <laughs> Хатта Америкийн хүмүүсүүд ич юм гэж байна тийм ээ. Зөв кино уул дэлхийд аяар охины тухай гараад аа охин бол нэгэн алдартай болно гэж бодож байгаа. Тэгээ ер нь тэгж ойлгож байгаа юм. Нөгөө интернет дээр гарсан ингээд бүгдээрээ тэгж байгаа. Тэд нар жуулч дэлхийд манай дээр танаа охин ингээд интернет дээр гадаад алдартай болсон юм. Гэтэл ер нь мөнгөний төлөө зураг мөрөний нохот аваад гэж Ah, <laughs> 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 Sultaniya <laughs> I 
So, as you just heard or read, Ashulpan's mother expressed perplexity about the purpose of the filming even halfway through the process. She alluded to how the family was being directed during filming and thus worked for the filming process, and she noted that her husband, Ashulpan's uh, father, uh, Agalai, had signed the contract w with its consideration of one U.S. dollar without a shred of understanding uh, as a matter of, quote, here, sign this. Otto Bell did pay the family $3,000 up front for their participation in the filming, and he was the one who told me this directly during my stay. He told me that the amount went to help Ashulpan's mom with medical care, and so it was consumed very quickly. But that was uh, uh, really a disconnect with what I learned in speaking with Ashulpan's father. Um, his understanding is was, in a nutshell, uh, boiled down to question, yoke money, yoke film, which translates to money, uh, no money, no film. So whatever they were doing for Otto Bell uh, was not expected to be a matter of maybe getting paid, um, but actually wanting to be guaranteed pay no matter what. A instead, what they were told by Otto Bell and what their understanding was that he was saying was that he would compensate them only if the film made money. So there was, a, as I said, a very large disconnect uh, between the two men's understanding of 
or what should be happening. The fact of the matter and the overall larger concern is that Otto Bell exploited the ignorance and the economic vulnerability of the family back then in not ensuring that Eichelpan's father understood what it was he was signing off on when he signed the life, life, story, life story contract on behalf of his daughter. Uh, after this interview, Eichelpan's mom granted Sarah Besh permission to make the interview public. So Sarah Besh posted it publicly on her Facebook page on October 6, 2014, which was very shortly after the interview took place. Over 31,866 Mongolians viewed Sarin Anabesh's post of the interview, and the outcry by Mongolians is clear in the comment section under that post. But if you're thinking that the exposure was only on Sarin Anabesh's Facebook page, you'd be wrong. Within three days, on October 9th, 2014, Time Mongolia, and I've just opened my screen here so you can see this, Time Mongolia, or Time MN, and that's the URL, uh, a news organization posted about this story online on their, uh, their news. I'm, I've opened this link and I'm going to go to the translated page. So there you are. Uh, it is a news story that is uh, given the title Injured by Eagle Hunter for One Dollar. Well, that's the uh, Google translation. doesn't help so much. The actual uh, better translation of the title is Eagle Huntress was cheated by one dollar contract. So again, that is uh, the date of this post, October 9th, 2014, Time, uh, Mongolia. And if, I'm just going to back out so you can see some of the photos that are in, uh, included in this story. There's... Uh, Otto Bell, the director of the Eagle Huntress, is pictured. I'm going to scroll down. There's some photos of uh, Vaishal Pan. And uh, here is the one-year dollar contract, clearly readable. And uh, as you can see, it's a two and a half pages with Otto Bell's signature and his, I guess, his uh, nickname for himself, Titanic. Or I'm not sure what that is exactly. And uh, it's not really a legible um, witnessing statement here, but that, that's the uh, signature of Aishul Pan's father. If you scroll down further, there you go, that is the video that Time also published uh, on a YouTube video. Uh, it's about 4,000 some odd people have seen that, uh, that post of the YouTube video of Saren uh, interviewing Aishul Pan's mom. It's slightly shorter by a few seconds of uh, what they posted online versus what I've shown you. And scroll down further. There you go. Otto Bell interviewed here by uh, Saren Anabish. That's Otto Bell. And that also has been posted online by Time Mongolia. Um, that interview was aborted by the filmmaker almost as soon as it was started. And then also findable within this new story is an interview of Tsarnanabesh with Aishul Pan. She, that is also in, during this time period of October 2014. So you scroll back up some of the jump out uh, information from, from this article was to, uh, just to show you that um, here they were talking about talking about the, uh, it was remarkable that it was written in English only, and however, it seems suspicious that the overlong sentences have been, uh, have been, I guess, written in a very unclear way. Uh, so you can see there's a lot written about it here, but um, some of the jump out things that were written uh, were included here uh, that they were talking about Aishul Pan's family as having you know humility and um, that this entire fiasco uh, thus offended the entire nation and country and also in this uh, it was also uh, the, that's the beginning of a scandal so that is one of the news stories that I found online uh, another one was um, by Asia Russia Daily News. Now I'll go back to 
this page here. This the Asia Russia Daily News story. That's the URL right there. Again, the first link is here in Cyrillic, and if I press translate page, it'll take us into that second news story that I found. That's the uh, insignia for Asia Russia Daily News. The title this time, and again, dated October 15, 2014, uh, the British shamelessly deceived 13-year-old Mongolian Berkuchi. Okay, so that that is... Um, the title in translation, Berkuchi meaning uh, eagle huntress or eagle hunter. And again, uh, Aizhou Pan is Kazakh Mongolian, uh, Mongolian citizen of the Kazakh tradition. So again, these are photos by Asher Svidinsky, Asher Svidinsky with Aizhou Pan, Aisho Pan and her father with a famous actress named Michelle Rodriguez at the Eagle Festival. And Otto Bell again pictured there, and again we have the first page of the one year stellar contract, and a photograph of Serenanabish, and more photos of Aishal Pan. So, in this story, some of the jump out um, things that I noticed were. Here. Saren, well that's how her name is spelled in English from, from Mongolian, uh, came to the conclusion that the Mongol, uh, that the British, that's referring to Otto Bell, simply cheated, vulgar, and dishonestly deceived the Kazakh family, convincing them to appear in the film for such money. Meanwhile, Otto Bell um, was called to attend a press conference held in Olgi in that same date range, and it was attended by a very unhappy and wounded looking Aishul Pan and her parents. Although at one point the report associated with the press conference was visible, uh, as published by Medi.mn, that's M-E-D-E-E.mn, uh, the story has now mysteriously disappeared, and only the cover photo is still viewable today. So, if you're wondering if this one US dollar uh, scandal and the controversy and exposure um, actually was taken even further. Yes, it was. Saren Enevish reported this to the Minister of Culture, Tourism and Sports, T.S. Oyen Gerl, spelled O-Y-U-N-G-E-R-E-L, who ended up helping the filmmaker by quietly helping him have it redone to the family satisfaction, which um, is something that I will speak further of in another uh, longer post on this issue which is in creation uh, as I speak. Uh, Tsarin Enabish did go on to a television show called Talk With Me, Star TV, Mongolia. And she had an interview with a lawyer and talk show host, Alison Seaborn. And uh, in that interview with Alison Seaborn, uh, uh, it as you can see, was uh, seen by 21,445 people, and there were comments under that um, main uh, interview. There are also two other versions of the exposure of that Talk With Me uh, TV interview, including my own video clip, uh, which is uh, viewable and um, findable under um, a, a YouTube video that I've posted online. The, uh, the, the lawyer, with her expertise in contract law, was able to give an educated opinion to the English language listeners of this uh, television uh, exposure. And she said that the contract that was signed without a shred of understanding by Yashul Pan's father would have, quote, absolutely no validity in a court of law. So as you can see, um, this um, actually, if we combine all three videos, um, exposures, the total number of viewers of the interview between Sarah Nenebish and Alison Seaborn is 28,285 people to date. As you'll also hear if you listen to that interview, Sarah Nenebish had to weather a smear campaign launched by a woman who accused her of trying to make uh, PR in exposing the exploitative issue. But Sarah Nenebish's stance was very clear. The rights of Aishopan needed to be protected and, quote, 
we Mongolians should watch out. So, listeners, uh, you may be wondering why you've heard nothing whatsoever about this story, and that's likely the case. Uh, the reason is very simple. This interview has never been reported on in the Western media, nor has there uh, have there been any news stories um, about this event outside of Mongolia um, and in that region. Was the this entire event a figment of public imagination? Obviously not. But director Otto Bell and his team and Hollywood want you to think so, apparently. Instead of going into a lot more detail here, what I'll do now is um, just say again that I'm going to be creating a longer exposure video regarding this issue with much more detail and more footage that I can share with you. It's going to be a long video and it's uh, in process and I'm trying to make it right now. If you're interested in the meantime in learning more about my work, please stay tuned. And again, please go and take a look at my other videos, especially the one called The Eagle Huntress Contradictory Genesis Stories. And please do follow me on Twitter. I, my handle on Twitter is Megan F. J. Fitz, spelled M-E-G-H-A-N-F-J-F-I-T-Z. And I uh, thank you for taking the time to listen to this and hope that you can share this video. Thank you.